Good morning. This is Bobby Dupre with the Bobby Dupre Show, presented to you each Thursday morning at 7 a.m. And, of course, it replays in its entirety on Sunday afternoon at 3 p.m. And, of course, many of you are watching it on your computers uh, worldwide. And uh, others are listening to it like you have for the past 36 years on KSLO. 12.30 a.m. on your dial in the sister company, 105.3 Simsport, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. And uh, all part, we're all part of the Delta Media Group out of Karen Crow, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. And uh, my sidekick here, Andrew. Well, good morning. Good morning to you. We uh, went over a few things. I think we have a lot to talk about. In fact, uh, I seriously doubt if we... We can't get to it all. We can't get to it all. We'll uh, try to keep it interesting and get right into it. I uh, see you have a picture mm -hmm. uh, of a longtime uh, friend of ours. That picture, of course, is of uh, a long former time. world champion, uh, and he was the youngest heavyweight champion uh, uh, ever. I, I still think he holds Correct. that record. Mm -hmm. He was either 19 or 20, something in that 21, in that uh, age uh, group, and uh, held that title for quite a number of years. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the gentleman that uh, took him out of a reform school situation uh, as a teenager uh, and made a world champion out of him. He and Mike Tyson is who we're talking about here, in case you didn't recognize him, but his face is kind of like Ali. Uh, worldwide, uh, they're known. And of course, he marked himself with some tattoos, so you can't, <laughs> you can't, can't, miss, him you can't miss him now. But uh, in spite of all of that and the different situations that have occurred in his life, uh, he seems to still have a lot of goodness in his heart. Mm -hmm. And uh, way back uh, in, uh, on March 16, 1996, at a heavyweight, uh, big heavyweight championship bout in Las Vegas, Nevada. Now, we're talking about big time. He was big timing it then. There was also an undercard uh, that opened, I guess, uh, the semi uh, main event. Uh, and it's our world champion from Ireland uh, who moved to the U.S. so she could uh, legally uh, do boxing, professional boxing. And I'm talking about uh, Deidre uh, Gohardy. And uh, I got to know Deidre real well when we served uh, for four years on the uh, Boxing Commission uh, when uh, Governor Blanco had appointed her. And of course, I've been able to remain, and we have remained friends. And of course, uh, she has since got married about probably now a year. Well, anyhow, they have, uh, she and, and someone have gotten together and have written a book uh, about herself. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mike Tyson heard about it and uh, volunteered to help promote this book. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, the, the night she had fought that night back, back in Vegas, when they interviewed him after the fight, he had said, you don't need, don't need to be talking to me. You don't need to be talking to that young lady that That's did so right. well. They should be interviewing that Irish girl yeah. that showed everybody up. Oh, yeah. And that he, he made fault. that comment to the media and uh, has stuck by that mm -hmm. and uh, is uh, assisting her in her pub publication and yes. uh, selling of a, of a real nice book. I have a copy, by the way, personally autographed by her. We might need to get Mike to autograph it for me. It's called My Call to the Ring. If you want to check it out on Amazon, you can get it. How about if I sneak a sponsor in? And Pick. we want to thank uh, Mr. Uh, Bo Williford right. for passing that on to us. Thank you, Bo. He's a uh, boxing uh, manager of the Cajun, uh, Raging Cajun Amateur Boxing Club. You got it. How about Piggly Wiggly, the three little pigs, with two locations in Opelousas, one in Simsport. Go by. It's gumbo time. They've got plenty of things for your gumbo. They've got 18-piece chicken combo packs of the drums, the thighs, and the wings for 99 cents a pound. They've got quarter loin pork chops for $1.49 a pound, and beef T-bone steaks for 99 a pound. South end of town, they also do uh, plate dinners. They do catering for you as well. Go by the pig. The pig knows best. One more. One more. How about Casa Ole? If you want to get some authentic, good Mexican cuisine, go by Casa Ole here in Opus is right off of the service road there near, across from the Walmart, as they say. Uh, great drink specials every day, good noontime uh, meal specials as well. Uh, they've got a drive through window so you can pick up your drinks and, and your food all through there. They package it all up for you so you're nice and legal to go, go home with whatever it is you want to get. Full-blown uh, list of, of, of great, authentic Mexican cuisine. That's at Casa Olay. 
And uh, on the front page of uh, Tuesday's uh, edition of the Daily World was a real good picture of uh, Brian Ledoux Jr. Mm -hmm. And of course, I knew the dad real, real well. And my brothers, uh, I guess you could say, kind of ran the roads when they were all young and out of. Uh, just returning home from the Second World War. Uh, I, that's when I first met uh, Brian Jr.'s uh, dad. And uh, he's shown on the front page of the Daily World with a whole big box of uh, boudin. And uh, the reason for this is a gentleman who uh, r has recently come out with a book, Boudin, A Guide to Louisiana's Extraordinary Link. Hmm. And of course, that's how you buy boudin in links. And a good picture. I'm sorry. I didn't have a copy of it for the television, but wanted to bring it. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't bring some boudin for the yeah, television. Yeah, and, and uh, of course, uh, they're talking about the boudin uh, that's uh, cooked up and sold uh, over here at uh, Kelly's uh, Diner, and of course, Kelly's Country Meat Block is where you pick up the boudin, and it's made fresh every day and uh, sell a lot of it, and of course, the diner stays real busy at, uh, at lunch, and you can visit some of your friends. I did get to visit, uh, I guess that was yeah, Tuesday, uh, did get to visit with Elaine and Kelly at the diner, ran in and picked up a lunch after seeing them. Uh, we were all visiting uh, over at uh, Dr. Richard Tate's office yesterday, getting my annual checkup. And I went there a week ago to make my appointment. I think I talked about it. No, this happened after this. And I saw Bootsy de Villiers. He was waiting to see Dr. Tate. I just went in and made the appointment for yesterday. And uh, while I was there, there was an a young lady there that I could tell she was one of the uh, pharmaceutical reps and uh, introduced uh, myself and she's Mandy Jobert. I said, whoa, Jobert, that must be from around here somewhere. She said, yes, my husband is Charles. She says, uh, think you probably know my father-in-law, Kenneth Jobert. I said, I sure do, the building contractor. And uh, he uh, lives in Lafayette Parish. I think he's retired, but he built uh, the home that uh, Megan and uh, Ginger lives in. So uh, good to talk to everybody as usual. And one other story here is uh, Mitch uh, Olivier. Mm -hmm. uh, Mitch uh, has a St. Landry Crawfish uh, Company, and of course he has uh, the location on South Union Street, mm -hmm. uh, Crawfish Corner, and uh, it's on, it used to be a canal station there. Right. Really fix it up real, real nice. And beside crawfish, he also has crabs and shrimp and uh, other oysters, uh, all types of seafoods, both at the site and on a wholesale basis. And then he buys pecans there, and they're just kicking up. The pecan prices went up from 35, I, he I heard 50 cents, and maybe by not up a little bit better. Some bad crawfish. Bad pecans had got knocked down with uh, Hurricane Isaac, right. and the quality was not good, so it kept the price down. I think the price is going to move up somewhat. Uh, m might not be as good as last year because the crop is so it's big. A big this crop. huge. I, tell you, I crop wish I could sell year. acorns too. Acorns, pecans. This was the year to make them. And then so. he's got another lo location uh, right in the back of. Uh, Thomas Mobile Station mm -hmm. on Academy Street there, the, the warehouse building I own, he puts in one of these uh, steel metal, uh, steel. Uh, s s well, uh, portable buildings, mm -hmm. and uh, he puts his scale in there and buys right there. He did well there last year, and of course, it's going to take care. And uh, Jim and Millie, uh, Brian, they retired. I don't know if anybody else is buying, but they used to buy pecans My there. understanding is someone's going to just do the pecan Just doing the pecan. That's, that's what I heard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, uh, Mitchell have the top price for your pecans. We got a nice note from Miss Jamie Cormier. You remember little Jamie uh, last year? They did a fundraiser for her late last fall. She had the bad spinal issue. She was going to have surgery done. She left for St. Louis in January, went through traction and two surgeries. She's only coming home now. So she's been out of, out of, away from her home for 10 months, having the surgeries and all done. She's feeling good. She's moving around, and she's seven inches taller <laughs> since the surgery. Oh. Can you imagine how much they had to work on and fix her, her back? So congratulations for coming home, Jamie. Get better soon. Went by just prior to the taping of the program on Wednesday morning, mm -hmm. over next door to Lafon Ordway Funeral Home to visit with the family of uh, Carla Prudum Barra. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, 
it was well as I knew her first husband, Johnny Barra, I can't say that I, I had ever even met but I knew her daddy real well, Gene Prudham, right. who has since uh, deceased himself. Uh, she and uh, the young man that she was uh, seeing, visiting, uh, uh, dating, uh, Ronald Bellard oh. from, I think, the Lortel Eunice uh, area, uh, they were riding on a trike, uh, maybe Sunday, not over the weekend, I think it was maybe Sunday, and uh, they were, uh, heading back into Eunice where the Casino Magic uh, Casino is located there. There's a caution light around there. Well, yeah, the, uh, there might be a caution light there. And that, I showed two, two, girl, two young uh, black ladies that working at the convenience store with the big beautiful smiles. That's the place I'm talking about with, where they work right in that area there is where uh, a, a truck and trailer pulled out in front of them and the, she and uh, Ronald both got killed. Went by to visit the family, and I knew her daughter, Savannah, through the Blaine Gilry girls. And uh, she's attended the last two years. She was with the girls uh, attending the uh, Super Bowl party that we have every year at Beau Rivage in Biloxi. Beautiful, sweet, mm -hmm. sweet little girl. She's uh, in Baton Rouge. I did get to visit with her. Also got to visit with uh, her. Carla's brother, Gene, uh, Gary, and uh, also with uh, Norris, a son-in-law, who's married to Paula. Uh, didn't get to visit a long time because I needed to get back over here. But as I was walking out, I met up with uh, Jerry Darby. And of course, uh, many of you have heard of the young man that was uh, murdered uh, over in Lafayette uh, over the weekend. And uh, I learned about it uh, kind of late Monday afternoon, uh, but it was not out until I think last night as far as who, who he was, actually yeah. who he till, was. Till all the family had been notified. Till til, til they got with all of the family. But it was uh, Jerry and Linda, and Linda, of course, is Clay Bertrand's daughter. Mm -hmm. And uh, her mama, of course, was Joyce, who died a few years ago. Uh, and then on the other side, Jerry is a Darby, and Mr. and Mrs. Floyd Darby, who we're very close to, uh, is uh, his uh, parents. So some real well-known people. Uh, Linda and Jerry live uh, in uh, Eunice, uh, right next door to Lisa and John Duplichan, who works at our, at our office. And of course, Lisa, as soon as she found out about it, called me. That I found out, but I did call for Clay, uh, didn't get to talk with him, but Clay and the whole group, uh, my deepest sympathies, and of course, I was able to talk to Jerry. They were making the funeral arrangements. And the, I guess the good news, they'll kind of get some closure, the fact that uh, they found out they actually uh, have uh, arrested, the uh, apprehended <laughs> the suspect who murdered this young man uh, in Texas on Tuesday night. So uh, the law has a long arm, the long arm of the law, and we were discussing uh, that computers and cell phones, they, they can get them now, for real quick. We're going to take a one-minute break real quick, and we're going to see you guys on radio and TV on the other side of that minute.